Three to England, great start for them. That might help the New Zealand cause. There are only two down now. This is Tony Alcock. England playing with, with the red shirts and the red coloured discs. New Zealand with the traditional black and white and the black and white quarters on the box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is a drive from Bellis. If he hits this, anything can happen. He'll be looking for the jack. He's got it. Watch this. That's a good opening from the New Zealander. He gets this as clean as a whistle. There. And out it goes. As rain once again starts to fall over the Henderson complex. Yes, it's normally follow the yellow brick road, but that was follow the white line all the way down the middle. Just enough to beat the little England shot bowl and took the jack and took it out of the rink. Rowan Brassy starts the first end of the match bad, for a second time after Peter Bellis had destroyed the first end with his last bowl.
better from the crack New Zealand lead. from David Bryant. Right, Rowan Brassy says, how do you like that too? But he doesn't get the shot. It's still David Bryant's Still with shot. Uh, last ball. Just down the yard, David. Well. England uh, still with shot, but All right there. three right. fairly close New Zealand bowls. Just behind the jack right. as the right. lead change over. Steady rain falling here now at Henderson. Umbrellas up. Rowan Brassy, the only uh, New Zealand players without a jacket on. Again, Peter Bellis will be looking for the trail. so far in the match from the English combination. No first bowl from Tony Alcock. of weight needed by Peter Bellis on his last bowl. As he got it this time, he is looking for that trail, but he slips past the jack. My word, that was a good bowl. New Zealand, believe it or not, have got five seconds in there, but they haven't got the shot. There's uh, four of them. Zealand bowls, both short of the jack, and there are the five New Zealand bowls waiting for the trail. Now, possibly, if Tony Alcock does not get one close, 
with this bowl that Peter Bellis may consider of going for the shot bowl. I think he's probably looking for more than that. He's only one down. Yes, I think Douglas the trail is, would be a more effective shot. And just about got it with his second. And uh, Tony Alcock playing two rather poor bowls with his first and second bowls. It's the trail that Peter Bellis is looking for. So close with his last bowl. There's a heap round the corner if he can get it. Brassie's having a good look at this one. Brassie's having a good look at this one. He does, he gets it. Don't, has he moved it far enough? He really just had to pick it up cleanly. He glanced it. And it looks as though New Zealand possibly won, maybe a measure for two. David Bryant saying to Orkov, maybe only one. Super line. Great ball from <laughs> Alcock. another Bellis drive here he's got two chances he's got the shot bowl or the jack and uh, with his first drive of the match Bellis uh, really hit the objective well he's playing with weight he's not bringing out the really big guns he's looking to get the jack he's got the ball has he moved it far enough? Because he also rocked two of the New Zealand bowls. Uh, well, same as the Keep first. Keeping that one of Slightly wider, Dave, than under Yes. Oh, look at that. Bellis didn't get the result he was looking for. Looks as though England have shot. Here it is. Fairly hefty weighted bowl from Bellis. It gets the, the objective there, but it shoots also onto the New Zealand bowls and pushes them out of the head. Yes, Tony. Good. Unlucky. Oh, he was unlucky, as David Bryant says. Tony Alcock, the English skip, has David Bryant leading for him, and the replay of the first end looking quite good for England a replay caused by a kill and for England that time on the replay they score one only and the game opens with a one to England it's now one shot to nil to England we're just checking that Yes, it is. We're just, uh, it's raining here. A little difficult to see the marker and the board, but it's certainly only one. It's England one, New Zealand nil. You're watching the legendary David Bryant. Perhaps the greatest bowler the world has ever seen. Hype and all. That familiar stance on the mat, the crouch. And he comes up and makes the delivery.
This is the young man that many say is the greatest lead player in the world, Rowan Brassey. His battle with David Bryant this afternoon will be one of the highlights of this match. And of the pairs finals this afternoon, it's New Zealand playing England for the gold medal and Wales playing Canada for the bronze. So throughout the afternoon, we keep you up to date with both the matches. Two ends have been played in uh, the Wales-Canada oh, match, and uh, it's Wales leading by six shots to nil. That game for the bronze medal. Oh, very hard, David. Jeff very Bryan hard. mentioned earlier, jubilation in the camp, and oh, throughout the complex there. for that magnificent win by the triples team by 18 shots to 15 over Scotland, when all looked very bad early in the game. New Zealand were down by eight shots to two. Come in for shot. It was David Bryant who led for Tony Alcock for England. They were in section B. Had uh, 10 wins for 20 points. New Zealand unbeaten with 22 points in section A. Whether we will see the drama and excitement of the morning match, we have yet to wait a while because this match is played to 21 ends, 18 for triples, and it was a great win to New Zealand to take the gold, 18-15. This is a better bowl from Brassi. Not only has he drawn another shot, he's also got it uh, just over the head. Yes, two down, Maybe David Rhys Jones would like to comment on the David Bryan style. David, you've played with him a lot. Well, yes, it's a, it's a style which is really unique to him. It's something that he's developed from a very early age, something that uh, I don't think any other bowler could possibly manage. It's balletic, it's crouch styled, and it's very hard on the legs and back. If you have another look at it, you'll see how much strain there must be on the knees and the legs as David Bryant gets up from that crouch and gets the bowl away with a Back little bump line. on that occasion. It's not, uh, not the best David Bryant yeah, delivery yeah, I've ever yeah. seen. <laughs> Tony Alcock was short with his first bowl. And uh, the man you've just heard, David Rhys-Jones, can uh, is well qualified to talk about David Bryant because he has won three English Pairs Championships with David Bryant. He's won three triples English Championships with David Bryant, and he's won three English Fours Championships with David Bryant. However, you haven't won the singles, David Rhys-Jones. Why is that? Well, he doesn't help me as much in the singles, Ian. <laughs> well said. Well said. Be Bellis playing the backhand, covering the back. The black and white disc bowl of New Zealand, Rowan Brassies, holding shot on this, the second end. A colourful scene, but uh, it's, as we look out from our broadcasting position, it's a grey overcast and it is still raining. So they are not to keep the sun out, those umbrellas you see, but to keep out the rain. Yes, very disappointing the organizers because uh, 
it was felt that today, had it been fine, as it has been most of the week, with the exception of Thursday, uh, the organisers were hoping that we would have had the biggest bowls crowd that we've ever had at a championship in New Zealand. Now there is the stylist and Peter Bellis. The contrast between David Bryant and uh, Peter Bellis, immeasurable, classic style. And a fine result. There, are two shots, New Zealand. Just to cheer you up, David, uh, Mr. Uh, Douglas, it's possibly three, is it? And this my man, who has been named the, the crown prince of bowls, following on from uh, David Bryant as being the king, uh, one, his style is, uh, well, I, I think we should let David Rees-Jones, who... who explained David Bryant's style so well I think we should leave him to explain Tony Alcock's style because it certainly isn't classic well thank you very much uh, Ian I'll uh, I'll do my best when we have a look at him next on the screen uh, Bellis however he's everything the the coaching manual would uh, want him to be absolutely steady when he gets the bowl away beautiful pendulum swing and uh, marvellous delivery. And you're quite right, completely unlike the two English players who are unorthodox in every way. And whereas Bryant might be said to have a, have a good delivery, many people say that Alcock's delivery is uh, all over the shop. This is Bellis, and you notice how his front foot comes forward. He's got a very solid platform before his pendulum swing comes through. Very solid delivery indeed. Good to watch. An attacking shot from Alcock. He right, takes some of the New Zealand bowls out of the head. But New Zealand are going to win the end. Bellis has one bowl to play. <coughs> New Zealand certainly with one shot. The bowl that's holding them out is the red disc bowl to the right-hand side of the jack and your picture. Well, that's the bowl that... Peter Bellis went for last time, just on the draw, just over the draw. He'll be trying to push again that ball through. Wasn't far away. In fact, just went underneath it with his last attempt. measuring that's the nearest English bowl remember there are two New Zealand bowls out of the head three it shots looks like three or two three shots to New Zealand and after the second end New Zealand go into a narrow lead by three shots to one Brassie delivers a three-quarter length end. <laughs> New Zealand open to their account with a three. One on the first end to Bryant and Alcock. And a great open bowl to Rowan Brassie on the third end. Certainly not unpleasant conditions here at Henderson. In fact, it's quite, quite mild, and it's certainly not raining hard. No, by the look of things, uh, umbrellas down at the moment. Bellis off with his uh, waterproof jacket, so uh, it looks as though things are all right at the moment. So 
so good opening balls from Leeds. David And we're seeing a great exhibition of lead bowls by both New Zealand and England. That's the shot bowl, the black and white disc bowl, held by that man for New Zealand, Rowan Brassy. Still New Zealand with the shot. There he is, the Okahu Bay machine. Just drags it through. But to waiting England bowls. Yes, but it was certainly better than having David Bryant play that shot. It's made it much safer for New Zealand and still has the shot for New Zealand. Seeing a bit of a contrast in the two matches between the triples and pairs, with the front end of uh, the triples uh, struggling a little bit. Uh, but uh, it's <coughs> New Zealand here with Brassie and, and Bellis playing more of the English style game, always being up to the head. That picture on your screen at the moment is looking from the back of the head and the two black and white disc bowls just close to the jack. One of those, the one above the jack, is the shot and Bellis is about to play his first bowl. to the jack. Ellis playing very confidently today. Next man to bowl will be Tony Alcock, of course, and uh, we were talking about the delivery styles of these top players. Before we came out to New Zealand, I quizzed Tony Alcock about his delivery and he said to me he'd never stop to analyze it if we analyze it now we'll see that he has a, an extraordinary flick style delivery which no coach would recommend until bowls started being televised in, in Britain and uh, Tony's friends started saying to him well look uh, why do you do this why do you do that he'd never really thought about his style at all but it's very effective Gets his bowls where he wants them to. Great try there. It certainly was, but uh, New Zealand still holding shot. 
possibly two. Yes, I think the English players, Doug, are considering the Jack High English bowl to be second shot. Bellis will be looking for that bowl with this his second, just trying to turn it out of the head. Of course, he has to be rather delicate because he doesn't want to turn it into the head. He's done neither, he's gone to the back of the head. Well, I think we should give uh, Peter Bellis the benefit of the doubt there. Yeah. He's got his ball in a very good position. I'm sure he was trying to get them back in a receiving position. Tony Alcock will be up with this, and if we can have another look at his delivery, we'll see it from a different angle this time. That little flick at the end of his uh, forward swing. It's almost a push style. In fact, it's very good for fast greens, but uh, you won't see it in any coaching book. Tony says he's a totally natural player. What's he done? But I'd be right in comparing Wynne Richards' delivery to his. It's, it's, it's also very quick. Is it the same? But certainly very natural. Um, I think Wynne's is much more flowing in a sense uh, because Tony gets down and his forearm jerks forward quite quickly, whereas uh, Wynne's more of a pendulum swing and a flick on the fingers. Danger here for New Zealand. Bellis may consider changing to the forehand. He certainly doesn't want to push the English bowl the last bowl of Alcox, which is up on the running surface, he doesn't want to just touch that into the head, so he has changed his hand and is playing this off the forehand. He's coming well too, just fractionally too heavy. Probably heard David Bryant, good line, which means good green, but uh, as you saw, not sufficient weight. running here at the Henderson complex at a surprising for the condition 16 degrees but that's the value of the cotular green 16 seconds oh. sorry forcing shot from Alcock right on it. Yeah, got the boy. jack if it goes dead which it has done we will replay the third end Well, here's uh, New Zealand's run to the final uh, in the pairs. As we mentioned before, they went without a loss, but there were a couple of hiccups uh, along the way. United States there, uh, Australia, and Botswana, of all places. Um, they just won by that solitary point. Then from round seven on to 11, all wins, a good win against uh, Scotland and a uh, tightish win against Wales, but the other games won fairly easily. So they topped their section with 22 points. England's run to the final slightly different. They lost to Canada in the first game by 
two shots, but then came the winning streak. And from there, virtually untroubled uh, to go right through and head section B. Nothing too much to worry about there. Possibly Ireland, uh, the pairing there, holding them to three shots. But from there on, it was all straight ahead for England in their run to the final. Just saying something about those uh, greens before running at 16 seconds, which is surprising under the conditions. Quite a bit of rain, but uh, there's been no change to the playing conditions. Well, our analyst here this afternoon has analysed the delivery of Bryant. Bellis okay. and Alcock. We better have a look at Rowan Brassey, David Rees Jones. Well, this is a young man I saw for the first time in uh, in Aberdeen. He has a very uh, straightforward, economical style, perhaps the most economical of all three bowlers on the green today. And uh, he has the reputation of being the best lead in the Southern Hemisphere. Many people would say the best lead in the world. And uh, he does the business and proves it in front of our very eyes. We're going to see a drive here from David Bryant. Now watch this, how he lines it up. No crouch this time, the upright stance. That's the giveaway. He's driving, he stays right up. Stand by. Stand by. If you to turn it over, it'll just look fast. That sort of shot won't trouble this young New Zealander one iota. He just has this remarkable knack of drawing to the jack. And if he happens to get knocked off, then he puts it back again. And that's going to give Brian a bit of a target. No, he hasn't. Three shots to New Zealand. Again, the drive. Will he get it this time? I'm on the other side of the jack. It's very rare that you see David Bryant fire twice and miss. He has another bowl left, and we can expect another blunderbuss from Bryant. said so often in the tournament so far that it, uh, there are not enough superlatives to recommend the play of Ryan Brassie this week. Has he got it this time? He's got his own, but he got the jack. A very fortuitous hit from David Bryan. He came off his own bowl, as you'll see perhaps in a moment or two, and that bowl caught the jack. Bryant was well off target, his third off target drive, and he was really lucky. He showed he knew he was lucky afterwards, but uh, he wasn't going for that red bowl at all. He was going for the black and whites. Dead end. The third dead end already. We've only completed two. the third replay of the third end Ryan Brassy who bowled like such a machine on this end earlier before the replay back doing it again
More applause, deserved applause for Rowan Blessed, Bressy with uh, now holding two. There the crowd watching a magnificent display of lead bowls again on the replayed third in from Rowan Bressy. He just keeps putting them back, burns the opposition off. And Bryant uh, deciding that uh, drawing is the... <laughs> best means to counter Brassy's accuracy. He tried to fire three times and failed with them all and he's drawing well now. Slipping through. Shots still with New Zealand. And if we can have a look at that uh, Rowan Brassy style which is so effective, so brilliant, there's very little to say about it. It's so economical. He does so little that he can't do anything wrong. When you put it all together, that's what happens. The man is unreal. He allows himself just a little bit of a smile here. Earlier, David Reese jones our guest this afternoon, said... He's uh, certainly the best lead in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, possibly in the world. Uh, can we leave out that possibly now? Well, in order to qualify as the best lead in the world, you've got to be able to play in both hemispheres. And uh, Rowan Brassy played well at Aberdeen, but he didn't play anything like this. And uh, we've got very good leads who can play very well in Britain. When they come out here, they they struggle a little. Um, you've got to be an all-round player, I think, Ian. Good comment, David, because uh, certainly on the far screens they it, they they suit Rowan Bressy's style. Bryant's going to drive again. He's got it again. Maybe in for a long game this afternoon. This is the fourth replay coming up of end three. New Zealand leading with uh, three on the second end by three shots to one. Here it comes. He gets the short, brassy bowl right on the button, and that goes on to the jack, and the jack springs out of the rink of play. This is another important uh, facet of Brassy's game, his ability to deliver the jack. And uh, this Jack has gone just a little further than perhaps both he and Bellis would have liked because uh, it's probably around about 10 to 12 feet beyond where they were playing for last time. Let's see if it affects Brassie's delivery and rhythm. Back he comes again. Rowan Brassie has not been called on to do 
what David Bryant has done in the last two ends because he's been bowling so well there's been no requirement for him to play the run or the hit. That's quite right, and I wonder whether it was intentional, the, uh, the slightly longer jack, to make it more difficult for the English team to make the dead ends. Because we could go on all day like that, with Brassie putting them on top and Bryant and Alcock killing them. Poetry in motion. probably see in the background the score is three to one New Zealand are leading three shots to one it's been such a long time since the scoreboard attendant has had to turn the score over David Bryant probably wins games by attrition. He just keeps wearing away at the opposition. And whereas Rowan Brassies keeps okay. putting them on, David Bryant will break up until he breaks up. Fascinating confrontation. This time the jack stays alive. Brassy toucher is probably in the ditch. The last bowl that uh, Brassy played was a toucher, and that was the bowl I think that uh, there it is. New Zealand have shot, and really it's a case of uh, get out of that one, Tony Alcock, because. Uh, that's a very close bowl. That's a toucher. So many people ring up and ask, why do we chalk bowls? Well, that's the reason we chalk bowls. That bowl in the ditch touched the jack on its original course, and it was driven into the ditch, as you saw, by David Bryant, and it still remains alive. So certainly we won't be killing this end. It's just a matter now of how close Peter Bellis and Tony Alcock can draw to the ditch. Now, Tony, grass is good. You're just going to go. Great try. 
to get close with this one because there will be a temptation for Ballas to perhaps run the English closest bowl. It's worth another two to New Zealand. Orcock goes into the ditch. Brassey is at the present time, he is chalking and marking the exact position of the, di of the jack. That's important because it, the jack is replaced to its original position. That means that Bellis will drive the closest English bowl. And just in case it was to disturb the jack, Brassie can replace the jack in its exact position. Here it comes. Bellis going for the closest English bowl. It's worth two more shots. Here it comes. Yeah. Actually, need to draw another number. You'll probably drift the rest. Alcock, one down, looking to draw as close as he can to the, the ditch. But fading one with down. weight. One to New Zealand. They now lead <laughs> after the fourth replay of the third end. New Zealand lead by four shots to one. Quarter length end. Brassy short with his first. New Zealand leading England in this pairs final by four shots to one. England gaining a one on the first end, a three to New Zealand, and a one on the third to New Zealand. They lead by four shots to one. And the fourth end at this stage. A measure for shot. Top of the jack there, the Rowan Brassy Bowl and two England bowls just underneath.
time. So the battle of the leads is completed in this the fourth end and according to Tony Olcott Brassi was holding shot until that last bowl came in certainly Bryant holding better position on the head with uh, three of Brassi Brassi's bowls being short on this occasion and anyone else but David Bryant I think would be intimidated by the form that Rome Brassi is in but Bryant puffs away on his pipe and looks completely unperturbed and on this end has outdrawn the master bowler from uh, New Zealand a drive from Bellis not to be outdone Gets two of the English bowls off the head, but he's still one down. <laughs> Here it is. Watch the back two bowls there. Tony Alcock, first bowl, lying one on the head. It's the slide off the row of Brassy Bowl, and now lies two, and a target for Peter Bellis. Earlier in the week he was uh, hesitant, but now he's confident. So it's a replay of the fourth end, New Zealand leading by four shots to one. a three-quarter length in New Zealand uh, seemingly settling on this particular length once England get the mat we could see a variation in an endeavor to uh, put the Kiwi bowlers off their length This is the replay of the fourth end. It's New Zealand leading by four shots to one, and it's Ratman Rowan Brassy who has shot.
the match for the bronze medal third and fourth places oh, yeah. between wales and canada six ends have gone and wales lead by 11 oh, shots to two oh, yeah. Leeds now showing a lot of character. Bryant, who has been playing at this level since 1966 when the World Bowls was at Frankston. He's hanging in there with Brassey, out bowling him even now. Superb play. Bryant playing with a little weight here. He's looking for the jack or the shot goal. Getting uh, the bowl and getting two shots and getting the congratulations from Tony Alcock. You are witnessing what I feel will be one of the great games of World Bowls. A great encounter. We've seen everything, even at this stage. Only three ends completed. One, two, three, four, five ends killed. And we've been going for over an hour and a quarter. Fantastic bowls. And look at the trail that's on for Peter Bellis. Off his backhand, he'll be looking to drag that jack to the waiting New Zealand catches. He's very close. England, two shots. The red discs of England, the black and white discs of New Zealand. catching bowls. <laughs> Bellis trying the same shot as before. Ball, He's going to get a slip here. And that's... and made the position on the head much better for England. We might see uh, the big guns now from Bellis. It's going to be very hard for him to draw a shot. If he does draw a shot, he'll try and draw it off the forehand and get a slip off his own wing bowl. There's a bowl to, that's adjacent to the jack. Going for the big hit. Oh, he got it off the front bowl and has killed the end. So, six kills, and at the moment it's three all. England have killed the end three times, New Zealand have killed it three times. Well, here's the drive from Peter Bellis, and although he was slightly off target, things in the end worked out from very well indeed. And he's played the jack very much like David Bryant did on an earlier end. <laughs> well, we're seeing a match here which is going to go again right to the wire, like the 
uh, triples match did this morning between Scotland oh, and New Zealand. Finally won by New Zealand by 18 shots to 15. And the gold medals go to Ian Dickerson, Morgan Moffat, and this man that Brendan Telf is talking to, Phil Scoglin. Well, Phil Scoglin, I'm pleased to say that you're looking a little more relaxed now than you were about an hour or two ago out there. There were some pretty grim, tense faces amongst the six gentlemen down on that uh, rink, particularly over those last couple of ends. Well, it was a tight game all the way, Brendan. We had battled to keep in the game because uh, I think Scotland did play extremely well in the early part and could quite easily run away from it. That's right. I'm sure a lot of people would be saying to themselves that uh, how did New Zealand win this match? It seemed to be that throughout the whole match from the first end to the last end that you were struggling to hang on to these fellas. Yes, I think uh, but they played so well as a team. Uh, if one failed, the other two were around. And, uh, at times, there was only one of us left. Fortunately enough, in the, in the latter part of the game, uh, we all started putting them together at the right times and uh, slowly pegged back a couple of threes, which got mm. us back in the line. Mm. They often talk about a break point in a game of bowls. In this match here, was it on the 12th end when you stuck your noses in front for the first time? Well, I think we stuck our nose at, in front for one end and mm. then, it, uh, then trailed again. Uh, no, at no stage was I uh, confident that we would uh, run away with the game. Uh, you know, a tight game, possibly Lady Luck will play the, uh, the major part of the finish, but uh, it was a game that was very little luck in it. Um, possibly just at the right times, we picked up a, a three and uh, got that one point in front, and then Ian Dickerson played a couple of very solid ends right at the finish and made it pretty difficult for him. How unsettling was it having to start the match in those wet, misty conditions? Very similar to the uh, conditions that we played the final of the week. Uh, the fours in Aberdeen uh, four years ago. It was a very similar sort of day, uh, possibly not quite so warm in Aberdeen as it was here, but we played in Drizzle virtually all that day. Too. Phil, it seemed uh, every time our close-up camera cut to a shot of Phil Scoglin down there today, you had a cigarette in your hand. I imagine it must have been a fairly expensive four hours out there for you today. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I actually checked uh, my packet and uh, yeah, I smoked a bit, a bit more than I normally do, uh, so it must have been a reasonably expensive game. Of course, it's been a marvellous career for you, Phil. We go back to the, your singles championship and back in the 50s and the Commonwealth Games gold medal in 1974. Where does this one sit in the career of Phil Scoglin in terms of highlights? Well, um, just to correct you, Brendan, I haven't won a gold medal up until today, uh, but um, it, it's certainly a high for me. Uh, it's um, you know, the winning New Zealand title was my first objective and then to represent New Zealand. And uh, since I've been representing New Zealand, that's the goal has been a goal. Uh, it's taken a long time to come, but uh, I'm pleased for myself and I'm very pleased for Morgan because he hadn't won one. And Ian Dickerson, while it's nothing new to Ian as far as uh, gold medals, new to him and well, bowling events, it's, uh, it's a great thrill. Now you've got to start all over again tomorrow in the fours. Have you got mentally how difficult is that going to be to come down off this high and go back into section play? If the fours had started this afternoon, I would, I would have thought it would have been reasonably difficult. But having the afternoon off to support uh, our peers, colleagues, um, and tonight, no doubt, we'll, uh, we'll celebrate to a certain extent. But we've got a fairly tough manager, and, and Kerry will ensure that the, the team are prepared and, and ready for tomorrow. How do, you th how do you think Peter and Ron are going in their peers' final at the moment? Well, I think, uh, as the media have already said, I think they are the two best peers in the world. It's going to be a game uh, where possibly Lady Luck may, uh, may decide the gold and hopefully uh, the luck will favour our guys. Phil Scoglin, congratulations once again on skipping the New Zealand triples to the gold medal, and we wish you all the best for the next seven days in the fours, and perhaps we'll see you back here in seven days' time with another gold medal around your neck. That'll be lovely. Thanks, Ben. So, back on the action in the pairs match, England holding a shot, and that's the bowl that Peter Bellis a moment ago went for. It's a rather alone England bowl there. And Tony Alcock certainly knows that. He'll be trying to draw another one close. <laughs> That's just splitting the two New Zealand bowls. Excellent, says David Bryant. Now the little forcing shot from Peter Bellis. With a bit of weight. <laughs> New 
Zealand on the replay of the fourth end, leading by four shots to one. One second only now to New Zealand, pushing the other one through. That forced Bellis to change his mind, and he's now drawing. Umbrellas come up. Okay. England have a bowl in the running. Oh, he's he's given the shot away. Bad luck, Tony Alcock. He was just a little too heavy. That uh, helps the New Zealand cause. You heard Phil Scogland uh, say a little while ago that uh, this may be decided with a little help from Lady Luck. And uh, that's what the bowlers call the rub of the green. In fact, that's what Phil Scogland a few moments said you had to have. One to New Zealand. They've played four ends, and New Zealand lead by five shots to one. Almost full length end. That's a better opening from uh, the English champion. It's David Bryant right on the button, holding shot for England.
Okay. Bellis will be looking for his partner to play this beyond the jack, coming into the back. <coughs> According to Tony Alcock, the shot is still England's. But an encouraging applause there by the crowd for Rowan Brassy. Great bowl. Jack and bowl into the ditch. So we have a exact replica of a head that we had earlier. I don't really remember which because we've had uh, six kills somewhere in there. But uh, it's up to the skips now to see how close they can draw to the jack, which is in the ditch. And of course, their bowl can't go into the ditch. Just down to the bottom left hand side of your picture there is the English bowl in the ditch. And that, of course, is the closest bowl to the jack. the few times that Rowan Brassie has been got caught with short bowls. Well, he's always been handy. He normally has something around the back, but that time he didn't have. Come on, Terry, that's a shot. Well done. That's a good bowl from Tony Alcock. Great nice ball. two. Just a reappraisal of my comment about Tony Alcock holding two. Actually, England hold four. The bowl in the ditch and Tony Alcock's uh, closest bowl, obvious, but England still have the other two red disc bowls just to the right of the two, New just to the left of the two New Zealand bowls. So it's England four shots. That should be academic, of course because way, Bellis should easily beat the, the short bowls, oh, yeah. but uh, psychologically, it's there giving him pressure. Oh, he only just dropped, only just dropped. Bring the run in. Slope down was there, isn't it? Well, you didn't get the hole. You didn't get the hole. You didn't get the hole. Brian just pointing out to Alcock there why the bowl dropped into the ditch because he didn't get the hook. His previous bowl actually bent a lot more. And so the last running was across the green rather than straight up it. Now oh, then, is that the shot? Up. Well, that's very close. New Zealand could possibly have shot. Certainly those two bowls on the green. The decision will be between those two bowls. The one on the ditch, I don't think, is counting. Bryant, in fact, told Alcock New Zealand had definitely shot. Alcock wasn't so sure. Alcock is running for the ballast bowl. Oh, bad luck. Good try. Try. Great try, Tony. Oh, 
Ellis will be looking now to get another bowl in there. Close proximity. That uh, reaction by Tony Alcock indicates to us that Bellis has got the shot. This match taking on the atmosphere of a one-day cricket match. You can hear the crowd, the enthusiasm, the encouragement. Peter Bellis, final bowl. won't be pleased with that bowl because uh, although it's uh, in fairly close proximity to the to the ditch uh, if all if Alcock happens to hit one he possibly may take them both so uh, that means New Zealand would be four down Bellis I'm sure would have liked that bowl to be uh, well away from the shot bowl And Alcock get it this time. Now he gets stopped by a short bow. David Bryant gives one to New Zealand. That's all they seemingly have got. Rassi lays the map and uh, will start the sixth end with New Zealand leading six shots to one. Very important bowl to Tony Alcock and to New Zealand there. Both those had gone. There was a question of around about four shots involved for England. David Bryant about to drive. Blazing. Now the drive. So it will be now a replay of the sixth end after five ends in this pairs final between New Zealand and England. It's New Zealand leading by six shots to one. Quarter length in from about a three meter mat. 
Ryan Brassi, a replay of the sixth end. Peter Bellis likes that one even more because that puts a bowl handy position behind the jack. See a drive here, a forcing shot. Here's the drive. Brian Brassie's been pouring them on again, so the drive is out from David Bryant. But the jack is alive. One down. <laughs> Let's see how clever Brassie is now with the jack offline and just a metre from the back with the front ditch. Oh, we get stopped by one of his own bowls. <laughs> David Bryan being called on to do more than just draw in this match. He's being asked to use the forcing shot to save. Well, we've seen this uh, situation before with the skips left virtually to play a game of singles and on both occasions Bellis has won the battle First ball drawing to a very lone jack. And a meter or so from the ditch. It's not lonely anymore, Douglas. Not lonely anymore. Tony Alcock now looking to 
follow that very good bowl of Peter Bellison. No, Peter Bellison still holding the shot. Good second for England, though. It's a good defensive bowl. Bellis will do well to put three bowls inside that. I'm not saying that he won't. Well, that's not what Peter Bellis wanted at all. He's opened the road to the jack on that backhand now. Tony Orcott will be much more confident about drawing it with his second delivery. Dead drawing required by Tony Alcock. Not easy. Two seconds. A shot held by Peter Bellis. This match being played to 21 ends. We're playing the sixth at the moment. There's been at least six replays of ends, and New Zealand lead by six shots to one. And it looks like it could be another counter to Peter Bellis and New Zealand, lying two. Now that's a handy position for New Zealand that Tony Alcock, Alcock can't go bowls. He may go one, but he certainly can't go both. Peter Bellis uh, holding one, possibly two. Bellis has played this end much better than Alcock. Alcock has tended to be short with uh, all his bowls. Now let's see if Bellis can make it three. Just got a little slip there off his own front bowl. They're looking to see if it's if it is in the count. I'm looking at Rowan Brassy, who's now inspecting the head. He's got a very good eye. He's not telling anybody who has the shot. And here's the situation. So I think uh, possibly Bellis uh, may have gone too far. He may only have one in a measure. Anyhow, here's Alcock playing the last bowl of this, the sixth end. He's given it much more green this time, but he's also given it much more weight. David Bryant has already taken one out. It'll be a measure for two. Brown Brassy to measure closest New Zealand bowl remember one has come out so New Zealand have one now he'll measure that against the England bowl it's very tight you'll remeasure it's remeasured the England bowl <laughs> Looks like, dare we say it, New Zealand's now David Bryant will have his turn. Certainly looked there like a thicker touch on the New Zealand bowl. Brassy had his measure taut on the red. 
Bryant, no hesitation, gives the shot there to New Zealand, that's two to them. So with those two shots on the sixth end, New Zealand now lead and stretch their lead from eight shots, uh, as you were, eight to one. Henderson Shower. Another brilliant opening bowl from Rowan Bracey. Those viewers who may have just joined us in the triples final played this morning between New Zealand and Scotland. A real neck and neck tussle it was before New Zealand ran out the winners, taking the gold medal. That's Ian Dickerson, Morgan Moffat and Phil Scotland beating Scotland by 18 shots to 15. Now this afternoon in this pairs final, it's New Zealand leading by eight shots to one. As I said earlier, anyone else, I think, other than David Bryant, would be totally intimidated by Rowan Brassey's dazzling drawing display. It says a lot for David Bryant and his years of experience and his temperament that he's still battling away. Oh, look at this bowl. Just fails to come around the English shortish bowl. And it's not very short at that either. Tony Alcock has asked David Bryant to come up and have a look at the head. Play a little on the narrow side. Just, just coming inside yeah, the yard, David. Here, Tony Alcock said, just a yard, David. Just on the narrow side. We just push the New Zealand bowl through. Kerry Clark leaning against the fence there, just by Rowan Brassey. That's the New Zealand team manager in the cognito, dark glasses, watching this great encounter between two of the best draw players in the world. Bryant there playing it with very sensible weight indeed. The bowl not achieving its object, but passing the, the head and finishing well. Key bowl, that back bowl of Bryant. Brassy being asked to play to the back of the head. And uh, since his bowl seemed <laughs> magnetized to the jack, I wonder if he knows just how to do that. David Bryant again just on the narrow side trying to push that New Zealand bowl through. There's a gap there for it. And has he got it? He has. Great bowl. Great bowl from the master.
and they say that these fast greens in New Zealand are draw drive greens but we're seeing not just good drawing and driving but those good controlled weight shots as well that was a perfect ball it is said of that man on the right of your picture now on the left that he is the Bradman of bowls the Bradman of bowls and that perhaps is the highest compliment anybody can be paid Talking cricket for a moment, it was a great uh, pleasure to meet Bert Sutcliffe in the uh, Pro-Am event which uh, preceded this world tournament. The great man from cricket turned his hand to bowls and he's uh, a pretty fair bowler, you know. Yes, possibly uh, New Zealand uh, only one down. England shot bowl to the right of the jack. That will perhaps dictate Bellis's method of playing this his second bowl. And there's a nice shot on too for Peter Bellis, just to touch the front New Zealand bowl, which would push the England bowl on to the jack. And there are three New Zealand catchers behind that. And now, of course, there are four. Bellis just uh, slipping through yes, yes. a yard. Yes, Doug, the plant onto the jack is very much in New Zealand's favour, as long as the jack doesn't go too far. That's right, it's very delicate. Tony Alcock, I believe, David, is one of the champion outdoor players indoors. Uh, that's a confusing, I know, but it's outdoor bowls played indoors in England, as they do. Well, that's right. Indoor bowls is very big in England now. It's, uh, there are 300-odd stadiums in England where they play full-size bowls uh, on carpets 40 to 44 yards long. Yes, when we refer to indoor bowls here, you know, 40,000 people say, you mean carpet bowls. No, we don't mean carpet bowls in that sense in New Zealand. It's this game played indoors. Indeed, the, the proper game of bowls, if you like, the grown-up version. And uh, one in which there are very big prizes to be won these days. When we go back to the UK in a couple of weeks, the, the world indoor title will be played and the winner of that will come away with £16,000. Just trying to see who that is. Is it Danny O'Connor? Because if it is, uh, Rowan Brassie's very good friend plays with uh, Brassie in many a national championship and also at Okahu Bay. And uh, Danny O'Connor is going to that tournament that. Uh, David Reese Jones has just spoken of to play for that 16,000 English pounds. Bellis about to play his last. The way Bellis has been playing this head uh, indicates to me that I think New Zealand are only one down. Bellis is taking a close interest in this one. <laughs> David, David Bryant having a look. Tony Alcock, one bowl to play. Oh, he's moved ahead. Now the leads agree. 
That was just a little uh, error on David Bryan's part. He didn't realise that his partner had one bowl to play, but the but Brassy has uh, accepted that uh, the bowls be put back in uh, approximately the position uh, where they were previously. So that was uh, just a little incident there. Very sporting gesture that I thought from uh, Rome Brassy. Uh, he could have uh, insisted even on the, uh, the head being replayed. But uh, as all good sportsmen would do, he recognised the, the innocence of the move on David Bryan's part. It's not like Bryan to make a mistake like that, I can tell you. Wow. <laughs> Ian Birch, you always say the bowl on its back is the, is the favoured shot. The English bowl is flat. Your favourite this time? It's very close in there. Nobody's telling us anything. Uh, no, I won't give an opinion on this uh, occasion. English bowl. I don't think he would have moved it uh, closer to the jack. I couldn't decide. David Bryant couldn't decide. Neither can Rowan Brassy. They're putting the measure on it. That's the New Zealand bowl. That's the England bowl. Back to New Zealand. New Zealand have it. One to New Zealand. So after seven ends, it's New Zealand in the pairs final, leading by nine shots to one. Well, let's uh, study the scorecard now. An opening for England of one shot. And then a three to New Zealand on the second end and a 3-1 lead after two ends. Now, it doesn't show there, but the fourth end, there were three replays, in fact, four replays of the, the third end. A one was gained to New Zealand. It was 4-1. to one. Then another one to New Zealand on the fourth end, a replayed 1-2, one, 5-1. Five, one. A one on, six, on five to make it 6-1. A two on eight, a one on nine, it's nine shots to one, and England have been locked out for six ends. said to you uh, a few days ago when we watched this remarkable brassy machine how hard it is to concentrate and to play in the manner in which he is playing but this is once again another remarkable performance from the Okahu Bay player the drawing skills of this young man are, is, are quite remarkable and it's because of the drawing skills of this man, Rowan Brassy, and David Bryant, that this game is going to go possibly for about... Here you go, mate. Did we say six hours? Well, it's a third of the way through, Doug, and we've been going for two hours already. So that, by my reckoning, that's a six-hour game. <laughs> and a six-hour game could mean that they could still be playing at eight o'clock tonight. Heaven forbid. <laughs> well, I'd vote for it 100% if you can have entertainment like this all the way through. It's been a really remarkable game of bowls. Now, that just brushed the kitty ever so slightly to new, uh, towards the New Zealand bowl, but you, I think you'll see that bowl marked. I'm sure I saw the, uh, the, uh, the jack move. <laughs> to 
give you some idea, the both games started at the same time. That's the playoff you're seeing now for gold medal and the playoff for bronze and fourth position, Wales and Canada. The game that we're watching, the England-New Zealand game, seven ends have been played. In the game for third and fourth place, Wales are leading Canada by 13 to 9. They've played four ends more. They played 11. In fact, they're over the halfway mark. This game is just at the third of the way. And what a great bowl from David Bryant. He's got shot for England. And let's not forget Peter Bellis. This big fellow has been sure. playing great bowls. He's driven particularly well. He's got every hit that he's gone for, I think, bar one. And uh, he's also drawn very well. So uh, the New Zealand combination, both in great form. Yes, one certainly has to agree with that, Ian, because uh, it's a combination of this uh, pairs team of Brassy and Bellis, and that combination has been good enough to restrict England to one point on seven ends. You can't do that from leading alone. for Brassy, who indicates New Zealand are four down. Bellis hesitating, coming to have a look. You can see the red disc bowls of England. <coughs> New Zealand catches at the back. Bellis can afford to play with just a little bit of weight. But more, most importantly, he has to draw, to draw close. See the four red disc bowls of England on the right side of the jack, two on the right, two on the left, looking like a domino five. But there are four shots there to England. on that occasion and Bellis told to drive at the shot bowls here he comes he's got it again got two of them out England still with one possibly two two shots I think. well I'll play the same again David but two to keep going in there yeah Here's the Bellis drive yet again, <laughs> as accurate as that. Now, probably England still holding two. There is a New Zealand bowl, however, in fairly close proximity to the jet. interesting decision for the New Zealanders there's not many New Zealand bowls on the head not many New Zealand bowls close Bellis uh, wouldn't want to get to uh, take his own off the head
the decision made. Bellis, last bowl. He's going to drive at the shot bowl. Let's hope he doesn't take his own. Here it comes. Drive possibly means that he could uh, be two down instead of just the one. Watch this go through that gap. Oh, how did it miss? Olcock looking to push the lonely New Zealand bowl out of the head. He just about got it. One. Measure. Not. So one bowl has come out for England. That's the New Zealand bowl being measured. There's the England bowl. He doesn't really tell us. It looks like two for England. And they score for the first time since the first end. And New Zealand lead now by nine shots to three. Tony. So it's Brian's turn to throw the jack for the first time since the start of the game. And uh, it appears that uh, they are not changing the tactics, the English pair. choosing to play the New Zealanders at their own length, so to speak, although that Jack perhaps has gone a little further than Tony Alcock has wanted. But uh, it's almost a full length in. first bowl shot to England <laughs> New Zealand leading by nine shots to three in this appears final at BNZ World Bowls it's the ninth end being played and England have shot that bowl to the left of the jack with this bowl, now they have two. New Zealand scoring six ends in a row. First end was a point to England. It was another seven ends before Peter Bellis and Rowan Brassey allowed them to score again. It's a maximum end. It's a two metre mat virtually to a two metre jack. You just can't get them any longer than that. From the outset, anyway. Unless there's a trail.
on that one, eh? Right? Okay. What was I round it last time I was, wasn't I? Uh, sort of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eggman, nicely yeah, positioned. Surrounding the jack at the moment. Gotta be up to go around it, yeah. It's not in the way. It's, it's, it's yeah, Brian, yeah. good job. Just nip that. the turf that. Final bowl from. Rowan Bressy. Valuable bowl there. Good bowl, Rowan Bressy. That's a good recovery. Andy Bowl back there, covering the back England bowl. Remember the jack's only two meters from the jack, from the uh, front ditch. There on the second row back, you can see Ian Dickerson and Morgan Moffat, gold medalists for New Zealand this morning in the triples. And they are there to give support to the New Zealand pair of Rowan Brassey and Peter Ballas. Well, a change of tactics from the English pair. They uh, have extended the end to full length and uh, certainly David Bryan picked the length better than Rowan Brassey. That would be fairly rare, a rare Get happening on, during this game. No, it's up to Peter Bellis now. All roads lead to Rome there. I was watching Peter Bellis's face when he let that bowl go and uh, I think he knew from the moment it left his hand it wasn't uh, sufficiently green. Tony Alcock, the world indoor champion. Looking to defend his title at the Alexandra Palace, London, about two to three weeks from now. Well, things not looking too good for New Zealand at the moment. Peter Bellis has a couple of bowls left. Could be three or four up. Rowan Brassy taking an interest in this one. Oh, he just failed to pass a short New Zealand bowl. Three shots, I think, by the look of that. Three shots to England. to just uh, tip out of the head not quite hard enough however but he could have made a shot another shot out of it on, 
dare I say it now, simple task for Peter Ballas to draw one close. But is it that simple? Just an indication there between Brassi and Bellis. Uh, I think Bellis is going to change uh, his method of attack. He's going to play it off the forehand. He's running for the jack. This is a brave shot. He's got it. And his bowl goes into the ditch. Fortune favours the brave. Not necessarily. Oh, let's look at this again. It wasn't a big one from Peter Ballas, but my word, how accurate it was. Look at that. There's a gap there. You can see it. It grabs the jack there and pushes one New Zealand bowl into the ditch. So that is removed from the rink of play. But the bowl to the right-hand side of the uh, ditch is still. It makes the the is still alive and is a counter. There it is, two to New Zealand. You've got to be good to play that. Virtue has spoken so often about being amongst the counters when you're three and four shots down, and that's the sort of shot that we thought Peter Bellis would play, but no, he knows what he can do, and he played a magnificent drive. The question mark is, and it's always, I tell you viewers at home, it's always difficult to ascertain a bowl in the ditch and bowls up on the rink. Certainly New Zealand uh, would have shot with the bowl, bowls on the, uh, on, the, on the rink, but uh, is the one in the ditch also counting? Bellis drawing off the backhand. to double figures and stretches the lead again they lead now by 10 shots to three and I know one man who'll be watching this this game uh, with the thoughts back to the time when he was lead for David Bryant and that's our guest commentator for the fortnight here at World Bowls David Reese Jones now David has won with David Bryant 10 English and six British titles so he'll be watching this game with particular interest Yes, one of the most jovial and one of the most friendliest of foreign visitors we've had here at the Henderson Bowling Club over the past week has been David Rees-Jones. And although he's got a smile on his face at the moment, he is in fact a little lugubrious of spirit at the moment, as his good friend David Bryant trailing by nine shots to three along with Tony Orpok. And that was a very important end, wasn't it, for both teams there? Well, it was. It was a big chance for England to come back into the game. Tony Orpok <laughs> took a bowl out for maybe five shots and it would have been 9-8. Instead of that, Bellis true to form, picks the jacker, puts it in the ditch, one to New Zealand. But I, I, I'm not all that lugubrious, I'm, uh, I'm not melancholy. Uh, it's early days yet, honestly, and I think uh, the, the England team have got the character to come back. What we've seen here, I guess, David, is something of a war or attrition, isn't it, between Bryant's driving and uh, the play, the lead play of uh, Rowan Brassey. Um, will one of these fellows break, do you think? Is there going to be a change shortly? Well, it's been a tremendous battle. I can't remember seeing such a contrast in styles. Br Brassey, I, I can't praise him too highly. He's been putting bowl after bowl in on top of the jack. It's tremendous. Bryant, though, he's been drawing well. We've been praising Br Brassey, but Bryant's been drawing to within a foot, 18 inches of the jack, and then hitting superbly. So, Bryant is putting pressure on Brassey, believe it or not. Brassie putting pressure on Bryant, admittedly, but Bryant as well is saying to Brassie, you put them close, we'll hit them off. And so Brassie knows if he's going to fail on one end, that might be it. The game might change. Are we seeing the best of David Bryant in this match? The man is a legend, you know his play well. Is he playing as well as you would have expected? I, I would say yes. He's being out bowled, I know. But he's staying in the game and he's not giving up. Anybody else, I think, would have been totally intimidated and out bowled by Brassey in his present form. Well, what do you think the English pair must do from this point in on to get back into the match in terms of a change of tactics? Well, it's very important that they should win an end. Now, they won an end a couple of ends ago and changed the length jack, put up a long jack, and it worked. They held five shots. All right, Bell is killed it that time. But while New Zealand are playing those short to three-quarter length jacks, they're going to be in control. They won six ends running. England must win another end, change the length, Jack, and see if they can change the shape of the game. Well, David, if there's any consolation to you, there's a big rugby match in Twickenham tonight between England and Wales, so if uh, David Bryant and Tony Orcott don't have much 
joy out here today. Perhaps they might have some more joy against your countrymen in the rugby match tonight. Well, I'm an Englishman here at Henderson while uh, Bryant and Alcock are playing. <laughs> but at not Twickenham, a, I'll a be different welcome. story. <laughs> yes. And David Bryant's partner, David Rees Jones, giving wise counsel to the English team, which obviously they're listening to. But here's Peter Ballas. Is it no wrong, Brassie's last bowl? Beautiful stuff. Not often you see Brassy having a run at the head, but uh, he has had a few runs during the course of this whole tournament. Unfortunately for the New Zealand pair, although uh, Brassy got uh, the object, he also took out the closest New Zealand bowl. So uh, it was sticking there. Matter now of Peter Bellis having to settle down and draw the shot for New Zealand. <laughs> so New it's England who's lying two shots. On this, the 10th end, David Rees-Jones said that many a man would be shattered having to put up with the draw play of Rowan Brassie, but not David Bryant. His experience counts for so much, and uh, he's keeping England in the game. As a matter of fact, over the last two or three ends, uh, Perhaps we could say that uh, David Bryant really in the game, but Peter Bellis uh, fixing the situation up for New Zealand. One for them. And the play of Rowan Brassy bringing out the best in Peter Bellis. Great entertainment for the crowd today. Miserable morning weather-wise, but by gee, they're seeing some great bowls. A win to New Zealand in the triples final, the gold medal to Ian Dickerson, Morgan Moffat and Phil Scotland by a win over Scotland, 18 shots to 15 in a cliffhanger of a match. And here we've got another one now with, Eng uh, with New Zealand leading England by 10 shots to three. <laughs> They're all joining the act. Ellis will have around about uh, two feet to draw a shot. He's only one down. it shrewd he's not playing the backhand on, on this occasion there's a lot of bowls in the running right. on the forehand oh. he slips in for another shot he's virtually saying to Bellis you have the harder shot to play and it is the harder shot to play because Bellis is virtually playing to a bare jack so it's Bellis now who's changing his hand he's going to play it off the forehand okay, Two shots. This is the tenth end of 21. So we're getting near the halfway stage, and New Zealand lead by 10 shots to three. Controlling the match, holding England to scoring on only two ends of the nine played so far. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to come running. 
Bellis has one bowl to save the end for New Zealand. They're two down. Goes back to the forehand, to least to the backhand. He gets a slip off that bowl and has come in for shot. Well, it was rather interesting because Tony Alcock, with his third bowl, apologized to David Bryant he actually said as the bowl came to rest I'm sorry it gave Peter Bellis a wing bowl and they are always a danger situation Bellis was quick to take the opportunity used that wing bowl put there by Tony Alcock to come in for shot So the run shot from Tony Orcock, one to New Zealand, and after 10 ends, New Zealand now lead by 11 shots to three. Yes, it did a bit, yeah. Well, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. 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 Quarter length end yet again from Rowan Brassey, and yet again he plays off the backhand coming in this direction. Great opening bowl to the eleventh end by Rowan Brassey. And a fine counter by David Bryant. England the shot. Certainly David Bryant has been holding his own over the last three ends with Rowan Brassey. And we're seeing very high standard of lead bowls from both England and New Zealand. Rowan Brassey coming in for shot, but what great bowls from both David Bryant, listen to that crowd, and Rowan Brassey, we're getting a real, real display of fine lead bowls from these two great international players. Well, it will be most interesting, I'd be highly interested to hear David Bryant's comments after this match, because... Uh, it would be very interesting interesting to hear what he has to say. Look at this stuff. This is magnificent bowling by both players. But the old master, the legend of the game, uh, he will, I'm sure, speak extremely highly of his opponent today. And I think Rowan Brassey will be delighted that he has performed so well against the maestro. I love our Rowan. 
Oh, what do you have to do? David Bryant is coming up to have a look at this. England have the shot. Yes, and uh, New Zealand were very unfortunate there because Brassie couldn't have bowled a better bowl, got the shot, fell down on top of it, moved the jack back towards the England bowl, and it really does look in our picture as though it's the shot to England at the moment. Not a lot in it. England restricted to scoring on two ends only in the game so far. Eight ends have been scored by New Zealand with the best of three on the second end. Tony Alcock uh, indicated to Bryant that uh, they had the shot, but I think it's uh, fairly close in there, isn't it, David Rees-Jones? Yes, indeed. Um, we were going on uh, Tony Alcock's confidence, basically. Well, just off camera, Tony Alcock is holding finger up. Yes, we have one, so we've got to take it as that. Well, from that shot, you would uh, certainly think that uh, the black and white disc bowl of New Zealand has shot, but obviously it's the red bowl is closer and one gets the impression. Oh, Bellis is close. Oh, there's probably no doubt now. It's still close in there. Brassy says we have shot. What a display of bowls we're seeing in the second international today, the pairs final between New Zealand and England. And there's Kerry Clark. Kerry Clark sitting next to Ivan Franich. That's the man sitting down without the hat, talking to Kerry now. He's the green supervisor, and the players I know will be very proud of that man. He's done a wonderful job. Yes, you couldn't get bowling like this. Look at that. Six bowls, all within a foot of the jack. You couldn't get that sort of thing on a dodgy green. So it's Alcock's turn to try and disturb the jack. And he has done it. The jack was disturbed ever so slightly. David Bright is in there. Peter Bellis is in there. Rowan Brassy is in there. And by the look of things, I can't tell you who's got the shot. I don't know who's got the shot. Well, these are the types of uh, heads you see in carpet bowls we're talking about, where you've got that, you know, tremendous cluster around the jack. But this is, you know, 100 feet or so, and it's magnificent. Bellis plays the first bowl on this hand on this end he's short the crowd say oh but that'll give him a sighter he's still got uh, two bowls to play it's amazing how the crowd are participating in this match i remember david reese jones four years ago in aberdeen you were there the tremendous buzz then the roar that every time willie would bowl Yes, and we've got it again, and uh, the, the crowd are partisan, but I, I don't blame them one little bit for that. There's a lot of Scottish supporters, a lot of English supporters, a lot of Welsh supporters in the crowd as well, and uh, the atmosphere, absolutely great. An occasion that comes around just once every four years. They might as well make the most of it. Look at this, look at this. Oh, oh he's given it away. If he did have it, he's given it away. David Bryan says, good shot, well played. But uh, there it is, and there wouldn't be much doubt now. New Zealand have shot. This is one of the finest ends we've seen in the whole match. <laughs> Bellis is going to play short, I think, on the forehand. Trying to protect what he's got. New Zealand likely to be satisfied with one. 
Yes, in a funny sort of way, it's more difficult for Bellis than it is for, for Alcock. Because Alcock knows exactly what he has to do. And he's got a straightforward chance of doing it on the backhand. Well, this is brain surgery stuff. You wouldn't want to make a slip here. Rattle it about, rattle it about. Peter Bellis is playing more the position bowls because if New Zealand has the shot, uh, he, he must ask Tony Alcock to make the move. There's no point in him doing it. Yes, there is a good shot on here for Tony Alcock, and Bryant has just indicated if he can spring the jack to the right hand side as he looks at it of the head, then England could get. Two, possibly three. It's close. It's close. So it's one to New Zealand on the 11th end, and New Zealand lead now after those 11 ends by 11 shots to three. As you were, 12. I can't. My arithmetic not terribly good. 11 and 1 is 12 shots to three after 11 ends. 11 of the 21 ends. Yes, well. And that's a head that could have gone any way for England if they had just been able to rattle the top of that head. It could have spung across for three. But no, New Zealand get the shot. And it's 12 shots to three. Two and three quarter hours this game has been on and we're just over the halfway mark. Eleven of the 21 ends have gone. Again, Rowan Brassie and Peter Bellis have been able to restrict England to scoring on only two of those 11 ends. A one on the first end and a two on the eighth. Just to keep you up to date with the playoff for gold medal and fourth place between Canada and Wales. They've played 15 ends of the 21. Wales are leading by 19 shots. Just waiting for the board to change to 11. It's now 16 ends. Wales leading by 19 shots to 11. wasn't like David Bryant that last bowl of his obviously something went wrong <laughs> New 
Zealand have two. Very loose head then from uh, David Bryant. Certainly not like uh, the head we saw previously. Peter Bellis, first bowl on the backhand. Just a slip inside the English and New Zealand bowl lying to the left of the jack. That's another shot. Yes, not, don't, don't let's take anything away from this big fellow from Wanganui, the current singles champion of the world. He has played very, very well indeed. He has played every shot uh, that has been asked of him, and we have been heaping the praise on the front men of both teams, but Bellis uh, perhaps has been responsible for the final score, and uh, Bellis uh, hats off to that fellow. would have been a little lucky to pick up the jack he was traveling a more than a yard he was narrow but that's the sort of luck that England are looking for at this stage to get them back in the game Zealand uh, still with two, possibly three, and just a, a, a hesitancy from Tony Alcock. Uh, I don't think uh, he is playing the backhand coming in this direction at all well. He uh, wasn't confident, and uh, David Bryant tried to encourage him. He said, uh, come on, yes, play the forehand, because he wasn't confident, Alcock, of the result off the backhand. Well, this is one of the worst heads that England have had to face. It's uh, never easy to face a count of three or four shots with such large gaps in the head for you to sail through if you're just a little overweight. So far in the game, we've not had these scattered ends and they've been very tightly packed and there's always been a shot to play. No shot to play here, just a dead length draw. Orcock's third bowl and it looks as though he's being forced back onto the backhand the hand that he showed a uh, little preference for a moment ago he's not playing that hand with confidence David Reese jones well he got the green better that time but uh, just pushed it an extra flick of the fingers and it went a yard too far probably would have gone two yards too far if it had been uninterrupted so a crucial end for New Zealand and for England at this moment in time with uh, ten ends to go I would give England a very good chance if they could score if they drop three or four shots here well things will look very black for them indeed a great bowl from Peter Bellis. He's covering the back. He's content with the number he has on the head, and he's covering any uh, contingency that might come about through a heavy shot from this man on the mat at the moment. But there's nothing heavy he can play. If he played heavy and got the jack, one would have to say he was lucky. 
is better. Oh, very good try. Suffering. David Bryan gives New Zealand one. <laughs> Two. Two taken out. Will there be a measure? Yes. David Bryant will measure the closest England bowl. Two out already for New Zealand, remember. There's the measure for New Zealand. The New Zealand bowl. Back he goes to the England bowl. What David Bryant was looking up to, Brian Brassie, there I told you it was only two. So two it is, and New Zealand gain two more on the 12th end. New Zealand now lead over England by 14 shots to three. Bella straightens the jack on the 13th end. New Zealand, after England scored last on the 8th end, from there on, New Zealand have got singles on the 9th and 10th and the 11th, and a 2 on the 12th, and lead 14 shots to 3. And there's again that magnificent display of lead bowls by 31-year-old Rowan Brassey. Yes, Brassey taking everything that David Bryant had to, to offer in terms of aggression and he seems to have weathered the storm and uh, has refused to be put off one iota. Superb display of character as well as skill. Someone the other day called him unfair. He's not fair to play against. <laughs> well, that's right. It shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> Second bowl, Rowan Brassey, staying with that hand as well he might, and here he comes again. Brassie has done a David Bryant on David Bryant because that's the type of bowl that David Bryant likes, the one shading the jack. So from the other end, you can't gain your distance, but the old master himself knows pretty well where it is. Yes, I think you've got to give full marks to David Bryant for playing as well as he has against this uh, incredibly dazzling display from, uh, from Brassie. <laughs> Bryant has stuck with it and set up his partner Alcock with uh, chances of conversions but uh, Alcock hasn't played his usual form today change of hand by Mr David Bryant MBE in 1969 CBE in 1980 for his services to bowls and uh, the most unusual reward was given him by the English Bowling Association. He is a life member of that association. So awards coming thick and fast to this wonderful contributor to the game. Yes, and I think it's uh, interesting to note that uh, his... his uh, oh, look at that. we are talking about David Bryant's awards. It's Brassy who de de deserves the award today. Oh. 
Unbelievable. Well, I'm sure he's overwhelmed Tony Alcock because Tony Alcock has instructed David Bryant to drive. And now England have the shot. A great hit from David Bryant. New Zealand, one down. And Peter Bellis collecting all the debris. Yes, I, I was saying just now that the, the awards that uh, Bryant has has received are for playing bowls, and I think he must be the only player to have been uh, given those awards. Normally they're given for administration. And look at this, Bryant firing and getting a, re a result out of it that he didn't really expect, but he'll settle for that, and it was a good bowl. <laughs> In New Zealand's favour, is the fact that uh, it is the only England bowl around the jack. Although the New Zealand bowls are all now a minimum of about a metre away. can't see from the angle that we're on uh, whether Peter Bellis can see those bowls but no he's drawing on the backhand still two to England if Bellis could see those two red bowls, I'm sure he'd want to have a run at them, try to take them out. But there is a New Zealand bowl blocking his path to some extent. Alcock putting the pressure on now. That's a lovely bowl. Three shots to England. Yes, that man on your screens at the moment uh, has been regularly hailed as the successor David Bryant, he's a magnificent player. We really haven't seen the best of him this afternoon. But now is his uh, opportunity to try and get some of those points back for England. Bellis drawing. It was on the ninth end that uh, England held five shots and uh, Bellis came up with a runner, put the jack in the ditch and scored one. Just listen to the cheers if he can do it again. Of course, if Bellis does run at this and misses or goes through the gap, he leaves for counting England shots with another Tony Alcock bowl to play. 
a count here could really put England very much back in the game. She's running again. Closest shot. That's all we just about got a lucky result. England still have four. Tony Alcock has a bowl in hand. He's drawn two, three already. There's no reason why he shouldn't draw a fourth. Well, you said he almost had a lucky result there, Ian, but uh, in a way he was very unlucky, uh, finally, to go through that gap. You'd have thought he could have taken something out. So, four to England. And this, the last bowl of the end to be delivered with care. Yes. yes, the only mistake that Tony Alcock would make would be to drag the jack back to those two waiting to get a bowls, but he hasn't done that. Beautiful draw shot, five shots England. So after the 13th end of this pairs final at World Bowls, it's New Zealand now leading by 14 shots. Two eight. Here's the better shot again. Let's see how many gaps he actually did go through. There it is. He comes off a New Zealand bowl, off another New Zealand bowl. Didn't miss very much by far. Didn't miss by much. And England have stretched out the end two meter mat to about a six meter jack for those of you listening perhaps or viewing this in England that's yards let's call it yards instead of meters now could this be the turning point for England they have not really on the card been in the match up to the stage but now Look at that bowl from David Bryant. Of course, this is just what England wanted, not just to score a count and uh, come back into the game on, uh, as far as the score is concerned, but to win the jack and to put it up for a full length, which uh, last time they did it did shake the New Zealanders to some extent. Slight advantage to Bryant. Some may call that an indiscretion by David Bryan, but others will say no, he's got the shot right on the jack. Nothing like a back bowl after that. Yeah, it would break most men's hearts. That's quite right, Doug. It would break most people's hearts. They would give up, they would put their bowls in their bag and they would go, go home. But not David Bryant. David Bryant is uh, the sort who will say, well bowled, Rowan, put his hands together and clap, and then get on the mat and try and beat it. Brave effort, beautiful weight. David Bryant, the only grandfather on the rink. 
but a very fit 56 year old this is the little controlled weight shot from David Bryant Peter Bellis will want this last bowl of Rowan Brassies of the 14th end behind the uh, yeah, between, Jack if possible. And he's got it. About time to have a look at the Bryant style again. The crouch, the controlled rise, and then the step forward with a beautiful pendulum swing, away the ball goes, and the back leg right up in the air. It's all a question of balance. Well. Alcock uh, starting to come right, showing uh, just how good this fellow is, and believe me, he is very good. Ellis looking to play a similar type shot to the one just played by Tony Alcock. Bellis beginning to find the holes now in the head. Could it be that the balance of the game is changing? to rest the shot bowls. He's got one off the head which will help the New Zealand cause. It appears, by the way they're looking at it, as if it's a measure for shot. Disappointing that for England, Tony Alcock needed another bowl in. And we looked at Bryant's style, this is the Alcock style. So forward he steps and then the forearm comes through rather more quickly and urges the bowl forward. Very little follow through in the style. Totally natural, something he picked up as a child. Been bowling since he was about seven. Bellis looking to draw the shot. Failing with weight. Certainly uh, it looks as though the bowl, the English bowl, to the left hand side of the jack looks possibly shot. As the rain starts to fall yet again 
and to Henderson. This is coming fairly fast. He's got the jack. Has he given the shot away? He has. Bad luck again, Tony Olcock. That's about twice, I think, or three times in the match that uh, Lady Luck has gone against him. <laughs> Bryant trying to hide his disappointment, chuckling away to Rowan Brassy, saying that's the way it goes. Peter Bellis it is with the last bowl of this the 14th end it's a bonus bowl already has shot must play it wide though not to press the England bowl in front up to the jack it's just a dead draw and again mustn't take the jack back to a waiting England bowl played it pretty well 1 only though to New Zealand and so on the 14th end they score a 1 and New Zealand now lead by 15 shots to 8. End from Rowan Brassy, first bowl. Here's the reply from David Bryant. Shot to England. And look at that. The trail by Rowan Brassey. Two shots, New Zealand. If David Bryant's not getting frustrated, I'm not too sure about Tony Alcock. He can't believe what he's seeing. Bryant, though, still puffing away on his bike as though he's having an afternoon roll-up at the local club. There's a very fine reply by... David Bryant has the shot now, England. 15-8 is the score to New Zealand over England, and they played 14 ends. So this end, uh, the 15th end, and another classy display of lead bowls by both Rowan Brassey and David Bryant. It's the Englishman, though, with the shot at the moment. But here comes the New Zealand bowl again of Rowan Brassey, but gets just wrecked on his own bowl. Look, you could throw a tea towel over that. That's brilliant stuff. And 
we should add, Doug Armstrong, that the jack has been moved. Rowan Brassi uh, trailed the jack with his uh, second bowl. So there has been movement of the jack. As you can see, it's offline. There's the centre line of the rink. You can just see to the bottom of your picture there. The white chalk mark, if you look carefully. And you can see how much the jack is offline. And you can also see that England have shot bowl to the left of your screen. 